It's a comedy. comedy. That's right. I'm a hacker. <laughs> in an economic league table. <laughs> 18th, we're barely Premier League. We're the Bolton Wanderers of the fucking world. <laughs> Other countries think Britain is a third world country. It's completely true. I don't know if you know, but middle class Indians come to Britain to find themselves. <laughs> you see them walking around in shell suits going, I love ethnic dress, I really do. <laughs> Going up to homeless people going, but I bet you're spiritually rich, aren't you? <laughs> in Taiwan, there are people out there going, who made this bollocks? Look at it, made in Britain. You might have fucking guessed. Look at that shit. <laughs> That's not true, actually, because we don't make anything. Because <laughs> I know you get these people who say the recession is over, right? How come half the pubs you go into, you go up to half the blokes there and say, what are you doing these days? Bit of this, bit of that. <laughs> Ducking and diving, wheeling and dealing. Mini cabin, yeah, mini cabin. Isn't it? <laughs> and then they bring in this thing called work fare, whereby if you're on the dole, you have to work for your dole money. Now, this is preposterous because this presupposes that people on the dole haven't got jobs already. <laughs> How are you supposed to survive on the shit they give you? <laughs> You see, and this is the worst thing with unemployment, is when people like my dad go, yeah, but a lot of them don't want to work. I just want to go, well, none of us want to work. <laughs> if work is so good, how come you look so shit on Monday morning? <laughs> Nobody's up there Monday going, zippity doo da <laughs> And if they are, it's because they're so pissed from Sunday, they don't know. I'm trying to get this out to a friend of mine in Baghdad. I've got a list of people to visit to see if he can help us get this out to Baghdad. Let's see who's on that list of illustrious people to see if we can get this harmless ice cream van out to Iraq. Here we are. This is where we're going to go and try and get our first piece of help from. So follow me in as we find out who it is. Our first visit to the home of William Waldegrave. He was working at the Foreign Office when he met with Alan Clark and Lord Trefgaard to relax the guidelines on arms to Iraq. Let's see if he's in and help us with the ice cream van to Iraq. Is Mr. Waldegrave in? Oh, sorry about that. Is he about? Can I have a quick word? Thank you. Hello, Mr. Waldegrave. It's Mark Thomas. Could I have a quick word with you, please? Uh, my name's Mark Thomas from Channel 4. What are, you, what are you turning up for under that? Time uh, what I've got, I've got a, a small tank outside. That I'm, I wonder if you, uh, if you have a look outside your window, you'll see. I've got a small tank that I'm trying to get to Iraq, and I wonder if... I just wanted to have a quick chat to see if you could help us get it out to Iraq. Um, you're pretty near the local laws, and it's a stupid stunt, and you better go away. So, is that a no, then? Oh, it is a no. It appears to be a no. Apparently we're near the libel laws, which I don't know where the libel laws are. Well, it's farewell to William Waldegrave. He wouldn't even let us in the house. It's very weird, watching the Scott report vote. And you just think it's amazing, because the government can go, oh, we've had a vote on whether we lied or not, and we won the vote, so we didn't. <laughs> and you think, great, wouldn't it be brilliant if you could have all law cases treated like that? At the end of the case, ignore the jury, defendant. Did you do it? No. All right, off you go. <laughs> There's a thing called the Credit Guarantee Loan Scheme, where if you're selling guns abroad, if the person you're selling to defaults on payment, you will be paid from a pool of money made up of taxpayers' money. Right? Our money. Your money. <laughs> now... Saddam Hussein defaulted on 652 million quids worth of stuff. 
every man, woman and child in Britain effectively paid a tenner to Saddam Hussein. We gave him the bullets, we gave him the lays, we gave him all the shit. And we paid him to do it. And the great thing about this, we turned around and called him a madman. <laughs> He's probably wondering around, going, oh yeah, a mad mate. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> No sense at all. Can I have some more? Thank you. <laughs> I really want someone to cut us up, just so I can turn around and go, come on in. The building we're now approaching is the Department of Trade and Industry. Hello there. Right, here we go. Oh, there we are. Excellent. Here we go. Come on in. How are you? I want to have a chat with Mr Lang about how I can get the ice cream van, formerly known as the Tank, yeah. which we're now renaming the armour-plated Mr Whitby. Yeah. I want to know how we can get that out to a mate of mine in Iran. So you want to get the tank now... So, so it's is an also an ice cream van. He wants to get his tank, which is now an ice cream van, out to Iran. To a friend of mine, Iraq, to Iraq. Iraq. To a friend of What's his, your cues and your ends? And he wants to speak to Miss... Why do you want to speak to Mr Lane? Because he's in charge, isn't he? Well, as you'll appreciate, Mr Lane's a very busy man. Oh, it'd only take two minutes. he suggests that you write in. Thanks a lot, bye-bye. We've had a bit of an accident with the stock. We're just we're just leaving now. Hopefully, Miss Nicholas Lyle will be in. Hello, is Mr. Lyle around? Uh, yes, that's right. Uh, I'll tell you what it is. Uh, it's an ice cream van. Would you like to come down and have a look? You can just give it the once over. Where are you? Which, which floor? I can give you a wave. Can I possibly take a number off that can be all this inquiry straight off this note? You see this? See, that's what we've got there. It's an ice cream van. Uh, can you wait outside? It's, it's an old Trevco. Can you wait outside a minute? No, no. I'm going to get my manager down. All right, lovely. Outside. We'll do that. OK, wait thank outside. you. That's terrible. I don't know where Lord Trefgaard is. He's their ordinary president and they don't know where he is. He's a lord, so he's probably a bit... Oh, uh, uh, gone for a wonder. Never come back again. Play him with the ponies. That's it. Marvellous. Here we go, right up to the gates if we can. Morning. Here we go. Ah. Hiya, I'm after Kenneth Clark. Is he about? Is right. Kenneth Clark around? Yeah. Is he not in? No, it's just trying to get it out for a mate in Iraq. Give him a bit of the edge on a competition for ice cream. See, is that, you know what I mean? Thanks a lot. Yeah, Excellent. This. This is where I want to be, Customs and Excise Advice Information Centre. Okay. Now, can I get it out there? First of all, can I get it out there? But, well, there could be certain restrictions... Like? Um, on, ..on certain goods. The gun bit, isn't it? There's a problem with the gun, isn't there? There may be. There may be a certain problem with that, yes. If I block it, would that be all right? You'd need to speak to the Department of Trade and Industry. I've been in there today. Have you? Mr Lang, he's, uh, he, he's on a long lunch. So, exactly how do you intend to export the tank? Well, hopefully I was going to get a student on holiday to see if they'd drive it over. What about if we took the gun off? Just took the gun off. Could we do it like that? Oh, I mean, you may be able to do it with the gun on. I don't know. It's right, the okay. Department of Trade okay. and Industry. That so, right, this is, me, this, is me, this is my licence form. No, this is the this oh, is no, an export not. documentation. This is your export document. It is indeed. And, and you need to complete that documentation. OK. Thank you ever so much indeed for your help. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Cedric Brown, right, who's in charge of British Gas. First of all, he gets a quarter of a million quid pay rise. 71% pay rise. Now, I was shocked by this, right? Seriously shocked. Because I, I didn't even know he was on strike. Right? 
I, I miss that, him sitting in a leather armchair around a brazier. What do I want? Whatever I want. When do I want it? When I decide to give it to myself. <laughs> quarter of a million quid pension every year when he retires. And you just say, quarter of a million quid pension? Where is Robert Maxwell when you need him? Because there was a man who could look after a pension. And this is incredible. He's given himself a quarter of a million quid pay rise, quarter of a million quid pension. I bet he's signing on. <laughs> Bob Horton, who's in charge of British Rail Track, he gets 154 grand a year for three days a week work. Right, on, the, on the other two, he does college day release. I'm not sure what he does. <laughs> Carpentry, I think. I'm not sure. That man is like the Tommy Cooper of the executive class. <laughs> old rope money, money old rope. <laughs> <laughs> Oop, share option. <laughs> <laughs> then, British Rail have had three accidents in the course of uh, last year where trains travelling in the opposite direction ended up on the same track. Ooh, what are we like? <laughs> <laughs> and the British Rail management said we knew they were going to crash before they crashed, but we couldn't warn the driver. We tried to contact a driver, we released a pigeon, it went off to the right, we never saw it again. <laughs> He thought, you couldn't contact the driver, for fuck's sake. Even the IRA can phone in a warning. What's the matter with you? <laughs> Your best bet for safety on British Rail is to hope for Bernard Cribbins and Jenny Agatha running down the track with her knickers on a stick. <laughs> Stop! And now it's privatised, it's going to really improve the safety, isn't it? The maintenance contracts for the signal boxes is being awarded to Dave and Dean's Disco Lights. <laughs> when it's fully privatised, there's going to be 26 companies on the track. The drivers are going to be stopping at the lights, they're going to be staring each other out. <laughs> <laughs> it's a driver speaking, we've got a right cocky one on the left. <laughs> Here we go, the lights are changing, show your ass when we get past. <laughs> what they want is basically the cheapest staff they can get. The entire railway system run by students trying to pay off their loans. That's what they want. <laughs> You'll be there going, what time's a train to Norwich? <laughs> <laughs> no, you'll have to give us it multiple choice. <laughs> Ding dong, we're sorry for the late arrival of the 8.15. This is due to a Smirnoff two-for-one offer at the uni bar. <laughs> the Mark Thomas Comedy Product is sponsored by Supertone Records. Yeah, I know people say there's no such thing as a bad job, only bad workers. 7-Eleven, I rest my case. <laughs> you could put Albert Einstein in 7-Eleven, and by 9.30 be dribbling and trying to find the till roll. <laughs> and it's just, everything in Britain is just so corporatised now. I think one of the only jobs left with any dignity, any soul and any pride is prostitution. <laughs> Seriously, because at least you don't have to say, have a nice day, and just do your job. And if they, if they legalise prostitution, some corporate bastard will get hold of it and they'd market it all and they'd be sort of like McShagburger's driving <laughs> fuck parlour. And you drive in and what do you want? I'll have 120 pounder French thighs, I'll have a muffin, a shake and a McWank. All right, so I'm go. <laughs> what size vagina, small, regular or large? <laughs> I'll have a large, thank you very much. <laughs> do you want compliments? Yeah, I'll have your very good and well, hey, I haven't had that for some time. Yeah, I'll have lies with that. The Lord's corporate symbol is the golden arches. When they see the golden arches, if they're driving along the street, then they know they can trust on McDonald's. They know they can depend on getting good quality food in a, in a pleasant environment. How important then is the sense of fun? Fun is crucial at McDonald's. Do you hope that that spills over into the, to the drive-in? Yeah, I tell you, actually, drive throughs is, is a really fun place to work. Yeah, right. Um, because it is still a bit of a novelty. Yeah. Um, and people who come through are often, you know, ready for a bit of a laugh. First one, excellent. On the about. Yeah, would you? Hello? Can I have a hundred uh, burgers? Sorry? Can I have a hundred burgers? Your 49p burgers. Yeah, a hundred of them. Yeah. Eight minutes for that, yeah? Eight minutes? Eight minutes? Yeah. Fine. Where do we, where do we sit? 46.55. Excellent. Today's going to be a good day, I think, though. 30.45 change, right? Excellent. Thank you. Hey! Excellent. Oh, can you put them in the back? Just parking up, just up there on the, uh... There we 
Do you reckon people will see that? Okay. We're going to get rid of the burgers. Do you want one? What is McDonald's property? This. All of it? This, this side of the pavement. Sorry, which side of the pavement is? This. Yeah. What, sorry, I'm not quite sure. So which bit isn't? The road you're in. Yeah. The road we're in? Well, that's from McDonald's property. Oh, okay, then if they stand at somewhere else, that'll be good then. So, do you reckon... Can you go back to work before I sack you? It is good fun. It's a great place to work. Are you going to leave McDonald's the ball? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not on it, am I? Yeah, no, 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 but your friends are, mate. The ball, you want the ball off? I want the ball off for the people off, please. Okay, well, I've got to leave my mate in in case we get a sudden rush. All right? But I'll put this here. Burgers here. Yeah, I have got some burgers. Do you want to get... I think they're 30p. 30? Is it 30? They're 49p? Yeah, not allowed to film on my property. 49p, excuse me. So do you recommend we sell them on at 49? Whatever job you have, you have to fuck it up, wouldn't you agree? Yeah. I'll give you the example that I think is brilliant. It's um, <laughs> the guy who has to run up and down the aisle in Safeways to find the price of stuff. Now, what happens, girl on the till, now this is a brilliant one, the girl on the till says, I want you to find the price of potato croquettes. The guy ran up the aisle, practically dived into the freezer unit, <laughs> rummaging around, frozen peas, onion rings, potato croquettes, whatever, grabs the potato croquettes, looked at the price, memorises the price, stares at it, jumps out, rushes straight down, straight up to the girl on the till and just goes, Thin line, thin line, thick line, thick line, thin line, thin line, thick line, thick line, thin line, thin line, thin line, thick line, thick line, thin line, thin line, thick line, thin line, thin. Ronald McDonald is the children's friend. He comes into restaurants and gives children's magic shows, and he also appears in our children's commercials. Yes, the drive-through is still a novelty, really. Fun is crucial at McDonald's. Just here, just here. Right, all right. So, get out and just... Oh, for God's sake! Would you look at this? Sorry, the car's falling apart. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry about this. The car's gone completely to pot. Are you all right? All right, you get out, you get out. What, do you want to... What do you want? What do you want? I'll have a beef burger. A beef burger? Can we have a beef burger? Can we have a beef burger? Yeah, what's the problem, sir? There's no problem. That car's faulty, but can we have a beef burger? Can we have a beef burger? Do you want to see Ronald or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We it's want what? two Big Macs for nine pence. Oh, two we want Macs one Macs. hamburger. Yeah, take the old Alice All right. I'll take the cold cup. OK. Ronald in? Is Ronald in? Oh, I'll just pull your trousers up. Will you pull your trousers up? I can't believe this. The service you get at the drive through windows is every bit as good as the service you'll get at the front counter. Oh, for God's sake. Hello, sir. Just will you behave? Hang on, put the door back on. Put the door back on, for God's sake. Yeah, will you put it out? Put it out. Put it out. Oh, I'm terribly sorry about this. They're clowns. I wanted them to get a happy meal. And then the fun is what results from it. Yeah, yeah all right, I'll get them to go. OK, go on, up we go. I'm just going around. You, you heard McDonald's tell us to get off their pavement. So we wrote to Wandsworth Council and asked them. <laughs> and guess what? They told a McFib. <laughs> Come in here and film, you have to have permission to film. Do you want cheese? Uh, yeah. You want to stop filming or else I get the police to move you. We say to the staff, put yourself in the customer's shoes. You don't want to be greeted by a miserable face at the counter. You don't want someone snarling at you and you want to see a friendly face. 
Did you point the camera a different way? I don't know if you saw last week, we were having a Tory-thon. Because the Tory party... Oh, £15 million pound in the red! Yeah! We asked you to send in your jumble and we'd have a Tory-thon. And if you remember, we, we donated Simon Hughes, the Liberal Democrats' underwear, for the first jumble. But we're actually, we can't donate them. We're sending them to William Waldegrove because we think he needs a clean pair after Monday's open. So, you know. Um, some people did send some stuff in. It's a chew it. One shoe, a biscuit. Keep sending in all your old bits of jumble because every penny helps. Tales of shipping and insurance. Jackie Chan t shirt, man. That's kung fu. I mean, they're cows, aren't they beautiful? Yeah, they Come on. It's Simon. This is our friend Simon. So can't we get served again? No, sir, sorry, oh, because what it is, we're after we're after getting them some bean burgers. You'll give yourself an ulcer if you do all of this. No bean burgers for the boys, the girls. Sorry. Britain doesn't own anything anymore. We don't have anything of Britain left that's ours. It's completely true. We've just sold off the the uh, British Rail freight to America, right? Northumbrian water is owned by the French. Southeast and southwestern electricity is owned by America. The boat that crashed off Wales, right, is a Cypriot boat, crewed by Russians, flag of convenience from Liberia, delivering oil to Texaco, which is an American company. The oil that ended up on the beach, by the way, covered in shit, that's ours. The shitty bit, that's ours. <laughs> Like the tug that pushed the thing off is Chinese. We don't own anything. John Major, he's owned by the Ulster Unionists. We don't own anything. We own nothing. In fact, Northern Ireland is the only thing that we actually own. And we fucking nicked that. Every week in Dublin on Crime Watch, there's a picture of Oliver Cromwell. Have you seen this man? Send it off to America. Fuck it. You say that you're a fucking Irish. You have the bastard. Because <laughs> it'd be great to see Ian Paisley going, The Americans own it. The British have got no more power, no more influence, no more money. I'm a Yankee doodle daddy. <laughs> Again, how are you? We've been banned. So you've banned us from McDonald's. Can we reverse it up a bit? Saddam Hussein wasn't the biggest defaulter on arms repayments. If you want to find out who was, phone up the DTI on 0171 215 5000 and ask for the Export Credit Guarantee Department. That's 0171 215 5000. Tell them Mark sent you.